Steve Jew and MMA Mania. Paul, you're on the phone with Steve Jew and MMA Mania. Hey, Paul, how are you doing Ooh. today? Good, my friend. How are you? I'm great. I'm really looking forward to your fight on January 29th against Andy Urich. How is the training camp going? Yeah, training camp has gone very well. We're, we're pretty much done. Um, yeah, the final week is this week. Just, just kicking over, making sure everything's still firing the way it should be. Um, get on this weight down further and just, uh, beginning just to, to relax, just to let the body re-energize itself before, before the actual fight week. You know, we've had a daily fight week with the final cut and the press and all this. And although it's supposed to be a time where you're supposed to be easing up before the fight, it can be just a second because, you know, the middle of a training camp. So this week is my week just to do just enough to keep the calories to coming off and working over what we're supposed to do for the fight. But a lot of recovery this week, you know, just really trying to, trying to energize myself for, for the arrival in the States this weekend. Well, that's exactly what we want. You got to be energized and healthy and come in injury or not injury free, but injury reduced. Cause <laughs> I know nobody comes out of yeah. a training camp with no injury. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, you know, I don't really complain or let up on a lot of, a lot of stuff as far as injuries are concerned. You know, a lot of stuff I just get on with it. Don't go out fights, such as a certain, uh, blonde haired, uh, uh, you know, Muppet type character who's going by the name of Crosscheck, you know, letting his hometown fans out, uh, fans down. I, I, I just, uh, I push on, you know, I push on. I, I get in there and I fight, I do my job. And, uh, if I'm carrying an injury, it, it's my job as a warrior, as a fighter to work around that and adapt as a martial artist, martial artist should and, uh, still get the job done. Well, since you brought up the moppet headed uh, curly-haired warrior known as Josh Koscheck, he was supposed to be on this card, too. We know he pulled out an injury. That's what you're referencing. So I had the feeling they were angling for you to win your fight, him to win his fight, you two to meet down the line. Would you still want that? You know, I would have loved, loved for that to happen. Uh, hopefully it will still happen, but, you know... Mm-hmm. Koscheck is an idiot, but I'm sure he has management that would have uh, explained to him the situation with with the whole uh, him main event and the new co-main event to build up our fight uh, in in the future. So for him to pull out, just you know, it's a little disappointing to me. And it, it you know, it doesn't show me that he really wants this fight to happen. I haven't seen many interviews out there where he's talking about this fight. I haven't seen him to his social media angling to build his fight up in any way, shape, or form. He's sort of just doing his thing, you know. He's done well uh, at the previous promotion. He had a lot of money. Um, you know, he made a few smart investments, got some good sponsors. And, you know, I don't, personally, I don't think that he wants to fight anymore. I think he's done well. I think it's the whole Bellator thing is just a, a little backup, uh, you know, should something go wrong and, you know, in his personal life, but I don't see him really angling for this fight. And uh, besides that fact, there's also, why would he even want to face your explosive punching power again for a second time? Well, Karlstrak, you know, he, he done well. He, he beat me by decision the first time before. Um, he just fought a very boring uh, fight that would have been, uh, you know, forgotten about had I not added some excitement to it, uh, even though I broke the rules and, and got kicked out of the promotion, at least the fight was remembered for something instead of, uh, you know, the, the boring, um, um, uh, you know, fight that it was. Uh, so should the rematch happen, I'm, I'm sure people be open that I'm, I'm going to take the lead and, you know, have people, and once again, give people something to talk about uh, this time within, within the, the time frame. Well, it does seem like you always give fans something to talk about with your fights. And one thing that I've noticed is that you're seamless when it comes to transitioning between kickboxing and MMA. You fought in both last year, Bellator 142 being the obvious example. Does that seem like something that's going to continue for you going forward with your career? I would love to keep doing that. I'm a bit, bit of a shame that Glory's now moved networks. That would have would have been a, a much more simpler fit for, for Bellator and Glow to keep working together. 
I heard or I might have read somewhere that, you know, Scott did mention something about the dynamite shows continuing in kickboxing to still be involved in those. So, uh, hopefully I'm given the opportunity to keep kickboxing because for me, it's about keeping interested in, in the martial arts and the preparation. And, uh, you know, that thing between the two, I, I actually love to do that going from MMA to kickboxing. The preparation is different, um, physically and mentally and, uh, yeah, like I said, I love to do both. Were you surprised in the final round of that kickboxing fight at Bellator 142? Because Fernando Gonzalez had obviously never competed at high-level kickboxing before facing you, and he it came on pretty strong in that final yeah. round. Yeah, he came on pretty well. Um, you know, he didn't have to make the weight cut because he was like 10 pounds over or something like that. I let him off with that. And... Uh, you know, I, I fought not too long prior to that and broke my hand against Dennis also on his head. So a lot of the early part of my training preparation for Gonzalez uh, wasn't as it should have been. Um, but I take I take comfort in that. I take comfort that I can beat a guy who's he was WBC Cruiserweight Muay Thai champion, even though I don't think his caliber is very high, and he's undefeated as Bellator. I can, I can take comfort in knowing that I beat him. Um, in a, in a, in a stand-up fight, I mean, predominantly a stand-up fighter, and I would say I was probably at like 40%. You know, how often do you see me kicking a fight the whole way through? So, you know, something has to be up. So, uh, I, I'm quite comfortable in that. And she's asking for a rematch of like, if I beat you with a broken hand and just by kicking, then, and, and you was overweight, you know, you didn't have to cut the weight like I did. Um, you don't deserve a rematch in kickboxing or anything. So, uh, that, that done the best of. But yeah, he, he took a lot of punishment. He took a lot of kicks and, uh, you know, I commend him for that. That's true. It would be a different story if, uh, he'd done well the entire fight instead of the last round too. But like yeah. you said, he didn't have to make the weight and then you had an injury going into it. So it was a commendable performance on your part. But getting back to your opponent for Bellator 148, Andy Urich has told me that he wants to live up to his nickname as the stunner and go out there and stun the world with an upset. What do you rate his chances? Uh, slim to none. <laughs> uh, I heard, I think, uh, Dennis Olsen said exactly the same thing. It's more or less like word for word about shocking the world and this and that. And uh, I understand being in their position and, you know, everyone's writing you off and you need the motivation to get you through training camp and you need some kind of belief to hang on to uh, to make this all worthwhile and I know he's going to be the best fighter he's ever been uh, because I'm, I'm the, the most dangerous fighter that he's ever fought so I know I'm going to get the best version of him and I respect him for that I don't want to mock him but it's just not going to be good enough uh, and he will find that out probably pretty early in the fight uh, so, but I, I, you know, I respect him, and 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 I'm expecting the best version of him and the, and the toughest version of him. So I, I don't suppose he'll he'll go out without a fight. It'll be a it'll be a fight. Oh, I expect it'll be a great fight. After all, it is the main event of Bellator 148 now with Josh Koscheck dropping out. This fight moves up to the main event, but you're used to that by now. There can't be any pressure for main events as long as you've been fighting. Uh, no, 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 there's definitely no pressure for main events. It's, for me, there's, there's, there's no pressure in fighting. You know, it comes so naturally to me that, you know, I just, I'm so late. I, I sometimes don't take the, the, the scale of the event until after it's happened. You know, I fought in, I fought in some massive shows. I've, I've co-main evented in, in, I fought in the main card in Vegas. I've, Headline shows against Nick Diaz. Um, I fought as a co-main event to the greatest Thai kickboxer in the world in Borkow in Thailand on New Year's Eve. And, uh, I was co-main event to him. And these events, you know, I could just be walking down the streets and go and get myself a bag of chips on the way to the ring or to the cage. I'm just, I just feel so comfortable and just fighting so naturally, natural to me that you know, it doesn't matter whether, you know, where I am. But, yeah, main event is pretty cool. But, it's, you know, like you said, I've been there. I've done it. And uh, I will continue to, to headline a good few more cards in the coming, coming months, I suppose. 
Well, on a related note, then, I want to ask, because I've been watching you fight for over 10 years now, your career, you know, like I said, it's been a long time, and you're still very young. You're only 32 years old, that long, that amount of time. How much longer do you think yeah. you can continue on? Well, I, I, have, I have 35 as a cut period, you know. I know it's hard to say, you know, fights come back, more or less, and give it one last shot, but, um, you know... Despite what people think, I'm not a dumb guy. I'm very well educated. I have uh, a, a good plan in mind to keep keep my uh, uh, life sustainable and provide opportunities for my family. Uh, um, so within the next 18 months, you know, uh, I will pretty much be done with international competition. It is quite a, it's quite a lot of uh, it's not hassle because when you get there, it's enjoyable, but it's like you say, it's been a long career. These these international flights and the preparation and the training camps and you know it, it does take a lot away from from me and away from my family. And uh, it's time for me to sort of kind of discover who I am because in some some sense I have no idea who I am because my whole life has been consumed by fighting. It's going to be good to actually do nothing and sort of figure out you know. What, what the hell to do? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, within the next eight, uh, 35, I think, you know, I will look for Patrick Cote fight against, uh, Ben Saunders and, you know, the, the tail of the tape when it came up and it said 35, I thought, yeah, you know, I don't know, I don't want it to go over there. I don't want to see a 36 up there next to my name. It's kind of, to me, unless you get paid money like Mayweather and Pacquiao, Bernard Hopkins, and it's, for me, it's a little bit sad and it seems a little bit, Desperate, and I don't ever. I want to be fighting while I'm enjoying it, and not out of desperation. So, when it gets to 35, you know, I don't see myself making these trips to to the U.S. Uh, for these for these fights. You know, not to say I might not accept a fight in the U.K. And you know, if, if uh, contracts allow, or well, maybe I step away from the fight game completely. But definitely international competition. 35 years old. I will pretty much be done. I could be, uh, I could 90, 90, 90% say that I'll be done by a fighting internationally. There is one bit of positive if fans want to continue to see you at Bellator at that point because they're starting to run events this year <laughs> in Israel and Italy, so it could potentially be a shorter trip for you if you main event at one of those. Yeah, like I say, you know, <laughs> contracts are allowing and looking into the future and seeing what happens then. Yeah, but you know, these, the, these 12 hour flights and, you know, being away from family and everything, and it can take its, uh, toll from the and it just becomes a bit of a hassle. Even though while I'm there, I love my job and I love everything that goes with it and I'm appreciative. You know, it's, it's not fighting, uh, on Bama at your NEC when I just have to make the drive up to Birmingham to <laughs> fight and I can drive back and come home. You know, it, you know, it's not, it's not you, your, your, uh, UK or European show. You know, I am in the big leagues and I'm very proud and appreciative of being there, but it will be a lot to ask of myself to keep doing that up until the age of 35. Um, still is going on just to dive in, you know, just to dive off a bit. I'm, I'm one of, I think, the very few British MMA fighters that have been making the trip to the United States very, very early on in my career. Um, so it, it's been a long time. It must, but before you, Michael Bisping, you Dan Hardy, uh, you, you Brad Pickett, so all these guys, you can put me in the bracket of, of your Ian Freemans and your Leary Need on some Mark Weirs, if you can remember them. I've been coming and traveling to the States for a long time. So I think when, when I do, uh, decide not to be making that journey, you know, I put my time in and entertain them a lot of, of fans over there. So I'm sure, I'm sure they'll understand. I would indeed. You've already had a long and entertaining career. But one thing I wanted to see before that career ends is you possibly getting a belt or welterweight title shot. So if the plan is that to is. give it up at 35, do you want that shot before then? Most certainly. You know, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to be with Bellator and Scott's very, uh, He's a visionary, you know. He knows the fights that fans want. He knows the fights that will get fighters, you know, up, you know, get them ready, get them energized. Um, 
So I'm hoping that this year those fights are going to start to happen, whether it's against the big name free agent guy that they might scoop up like Daniel Silva, again, whether it's for the title, whether Koscheck pulls his finger out of his arse and starts promoting our, our, uh, our rematch, then, uh, whether it's that, but yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just after this fight, get through this guy, beat this guy up, then, um, you know, I'm pumped to find out what big fights that Scott can put in front of him. And if that's the title, then it's just a title, you know, um, but I'm easy. I just want to fight, keep fighting, keep winning. And, uh, if I keep doing that, then the tie will be mine. Well, how do you see yourself matching up then with Andre Koroshkov, assuming he's still the champion at the time that title shot would finally emerge? I think uh, I'm extremely dangerous for him. You know, he, you know, my one reservation about him, I did call him to beat Douglas Lina, only because Lina had been out for a while and, you know, he knew him during any struggles with making the weight, so... I knew over five rounds that Lima would probably lose the fight. But I thought Koreshkov was, I never met him until I was at the Lima fight, but you know, fighting on the same card. And, uh, I thought his advantage against me would be his, his height and his size and his range, you know, his, his length of his limbs. But he was not as big as I thought, thought he was at all in meeting him in person. So, uh, I just think that's a dangerous fight for him. He had some wrestling. He did well against Lima. Um, but my whole career, I've been preparing against you know these, these Division One wrestlers and fighting your Tyron Woodley's and your your, your uh, Kostjex and your Jake Shield and stuff. And I'm, I'm you know I'm I'm in at a good place now with my takedown defense and scrambling and getting back to my feet. So athleticism and punching power and speed, I just think that I'd just be a, a nightmare for him. Um, and I, I reckon I would knock him out should he choose to trade with me. Or uh, I'd win a decision. Well, that does bring up another question I wanted to ask, and I know our time's probably running short. But since you've been around for so long and faced all the best and fought in all the biggest organizations, what is there left for you to accomplish besides winning a, a title in Bellator? What else can be said that you haven't done already in your career? Yeah, that's it. I want to get a title. I want to make some. Uh, a bit of money so that I can go on that journey of self-discovery and I want to start fighting these big names, you know. Um, I read a lot of, of boxing autobiographies and there's, and there's a common theme in all of these where the fighter uh, gets to a stage where they've made their money or maybe they've lost the fight or something and then they're just like, no, fuck it, I just want the big names now. I will fight Ali, you know, I'll fight Sugar Ray Leonard, I'll, I'll fight uh, Roberto Ran. And that's where I'm at now. I'm like, I've done it all. I've, I've had title fights. I've lost title fights. I've held championships in European promotions. I fought the best in the world. I fought in Vegas. So, you know, I've been all around the world. Um, yeah, I want to be the champion of Bellator and I'm sure it's going to happen, but I want the big fights. Um, big fights, big money. Um, the ones that the fans are excited for, the ones that people look back on and, you know, forget who won the fight, forget who lost the fight. They just remember your uh, daily cost check to the grudge match, your Semtex first Vandalay, your, you know, whatever it is, whoever's out there free agent. Damn, if Fedor can get down to 185, I'll even fight <laughs> Fedor. Your Fedor Semtex, you know? I want, I want, I want the, the big fights, the fights that people are going to remember. Well, everybody seems to want Fedor that I talked to at Bellator, but what did you think <laughs> after you watched his performance in the, uh, in the Rising World Showcase? What did you think of his fight there? I think I could have beat Jamie Singh. That's what I think. And <laughs> not at a catch weight either. No catch weight necessary. I think I could have beat him at 170 pounds and he could have weighed whatever he wanted to. But, uh, you know, Fedor is, is a legend and I'm sure when his level of competition goes up, he'll, he'll still be, uh, extremely dominant. Um, he looks strong. He looked powerful. He looked in shape. It would have just been nicer to see him fight someone with a little bit more experience. Well, now, some people, not me, not this reporter, but some people would say that Andy Yurik is to Paul Daly what Jaideep Singh was to Fedor Emelianenko. What would you say about that? I'd say they're completely wrong. You know, I've seen the guy's fight. He's had 15 plus fights. Um, he's tough, southpaw. You know, 
he knows the ground game. He comes from a strong judo school. Um, he can grapple. He can do everything. He's not like JD. Um, he's a tough guy. And I only fight the tough guys. It's kind of weird. Even though I'm fighting these no namers and people, you know, people do compare. Oh, Bailey's just got a can. He's got a no namer. These are extremely tough guys. Um, who are champions of other promotions, you know, the regional promotions, you know, Andre Santos was a champion of Brazil. Um, that was my return fight to Bellator, 37 wins, 30 submissions, only eight losses at the time. You know, he was a tough guy. Um, Dennis Olsen again, maybe not as tough as Andre Santos, but he was a regional champion who fought some good guys and taken them the distance. Guys like John Howard, um, he's, he's done well at the UFC. And now I've got this uh, Andy Erwich again, who's a, he's a regional champion, he's a tough guy, not a lot of people know him, but he's gonna be, uh, you know, he, he's a, he's there, not, he's not there to just come in and get his ass whooped, even though that's what's gonna happen, he's, he's <laughs> coming to, you know, he's coming to fight. Well, I do think he's a tough guy myself, and no pun on your nickname, but I really do expect an explosive fight at Bellator 148, but before I let you go, I wanna give you this chance, plug your sponsors, social media, anything else that you want to get out. Yeah, awesome. Uh, sponsors, loyal, forever loyal, Fight Lab uh, in uh, Phuket in Thailand. You know, awesome people. Thanks, Owen, to, for everything that you've done. Uh, Hooligans United provide me with my cap. Great cap sponsors. Again, these guys that have been with me when I've, I've gone from the, the big casinos in Vegas to the small leisure centers or sports centers in the UK that stopped by me and now we're back on the big show um, to all my team and my family and all, all my, my law supporters who have never left my side and it, it's funny because without these guys I would not be relevant obviously I'm damn entertaining and I knock everybody out but it still it takes for some eyes to see that and to keep talking about me for me to, to be able to fall from grace from the large promotion in, in the world and still be able to, to find my way back to another huge commotion, um, you know, with Bellator, so it's pretty cool. It's great to see you having success in Bellator, and I'm sure that's going to continue, and we're looking forward to it on January 29th at the Save Mart Center in Fresno, California. Mr. Daly, you've been very gracious with your time today. I want to say thank you, and I really appreciate it, and we look forward to the fight. Thank you very much. Thank you. You've been the best interview. Good energy. Good character. You, you actually gave me a little bit of energy. And if there was all like you, I could do three hours of interviews. Um, unfortunately, they're not. But, yeah. uh, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, we're limited on time today, but I'd love to talk to you again in the future. Thank you so much. <laughs> nice one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right. Cheers.